Hello everyone, uh, Dr. Shane here with another video. Uh, this, this lab is actually kind of a standalone lab that we are doing. This is, um, uh, this is a rough draft, so you'll see my, my editing marks and things on here. Um, uh, Dr. Richardson and Dr. Kegeris actually wrote this lab and we're kind of field testing it uh, with the Chem 126 group. It's, it's actually pretty cool. So sometimes it's fun to do things that are just a little bit different. It uh, doesn't necessarily fit in with everything we've been doing um, in lecture, but actually it does in some ways, which I'm going to talk about. So what you're going to want to get started, you'll want, you'll want to actually have the lab and, um, sorry, I'm just kind of, and part of the procedure is uh, Dr. Kegeris made this video on how to use the alcohol sensor. So a couple things you're going to want to do before you get too far into this is on your phone, you actually go and download this app called the Vernier Graphical Analysis. Uh, hopefully that's not going to be a problem for too many of you. Um, I imagine we'll be dividing up the labor a little bit. So logistically how we collect data in lab may be kind of a game time decision uh, to make sure we get things done in time. So before you get too far into this whole video here, make sure you, you kind of you download this app and then uh, take a look at this video, especially take a look at it before lab, because uh, I'm not going to go through all the mechanics of the data collection, because Dr. Kegeris already does it for you there. It's a very nice little video. I'll make, I'll make some mention of it. Okay, um, the other thing you're going to want is uh, I should also have for you uh, some Excel data. So you see some data in the middle of the board up there. That's the same data that should be on an Excel worksheet. So you don't have to copy all that and type it into a spreadsheet. It's already there for you. I'm going to take you through how to do some dry lab calculations. And rather than do a video with Excel in the background, like I maybe would on a Surface Pro, I'm just going to do it informally on the chalkboard. So you'll want uh, your Excel spreadsheet open and we'll go from there. Okay, I'm going to come out and uh, explain the pre-lab and then we'll get started. Okay, um, so this is, this is interesting. Uh, Dr. Richardson actually developed a little research project and a side gig with a kombucha company. And you can see there that kombucha does have alcohol in it. It is a fermented beverage. So you're using microorganisms to ferment it. There's lots of fermented things that you eat out there. And by law, it has to be, what is it? Lower than 0.5% by volume alcohol, in this case, well, ethanol another alcohol that'd be toxic in most cases. So 0.5%. So uh, the purpose of this lab, so those of you that write abstracts or purpose statements, is pretty, is pretty straightforward, is to determine the alcohol content in a sample of kombucha. And we're going to do a procedure that you're somewhat familiar with. We take a series of standards where we know how much of the sample is there. In this case, we take a series of standards of uh, volume to volume percent ethanol get a signal, we make a calibration curve, and then we calculate the concentration, or in this case, the uh, percent by volume of ethanol in kombucha. So it's similar to the mechanics we've done before with a different instrument and a different measure. Okay, so pre-lab tasks, pre-lab questions. Make sure you download that app onto your phone. Uh, I think it's Vernier Graphical Analysis and watch the video. Uh, this might make sense watching this video and that one in conjunction. And then just, just to kind of give you some background information, uh, alcoholic beverages typically are measured when you buy them. One of the measurements on them is, well, what percent alcohol are they? Sometimes called ABV, alcohol by volume, usually reported as a percent. So just, I'm just, you can look these up where you want, but what is a typical ABV? So kombucha is about 0.5%, that's really low, because it's not really going to have any intoxicating effects. But what's a typical ABV for beer? What's a typical ABV for wine? And there's a wide range there. Some beers have very high alcohol content, some have very low content. So that's beer and wine. Um, and uh, those also have some fermentation involved with them. When you get up to things that are distilled spirits, where you have a um, well, you have maybe a fermentation process, but then you distill the liquor over, so it's a higher concentration of alcohol. So those are called liquors sometimes, that's a historical term. Uh, distilled spirits is another term that's used there. Um, there, when you get into high alcohol concentrations, you'll often see something called proof. 
used to communicate how much alcohol <coughs> excuse me, is in there. So what does the word proof mean? And go from there. And actually, I'm going to give you an example of that. So that's just looking up a few things there. And then I have some Excel activities, which I'm going to take, take uh, through with you there. All right, so uh, what do I want to do? OK, so let's just look at the procedure. So you've got the app. Uh, you've got the, uh, the apparatus, and you're ready to go. Instead of my phone, I put the uh, data collection app onto this computer, because I also want to do the Excel activities with you. So I'm, I'm not going to go through the whole procedure, but this, this is what the uh, piece of equipment looks like. This is the alcohol sensor. I'm going to look at the procedure here. And a couple things I don't have. So it's basically simple. We have a plastic bottle that has a stopper in it. The alcohol sensor will go in the stopper, and the alcohol sensor will be above the liquid. You don't want to plug it. We're not measuring the uh, alcohol in the liquid. We're measuring the vapor above the liquid. So it's vapor, not aqueous ethanol. That's important. Also, the procedure says, even underlines it, make sure there's a piece of Teflon tape. I think you can probably see that this white tape that's in it. That is important that the Teflon tape is there. OK, um, I'm not sure how much of this. Yeah, there's a picture of the apparatus here. Too. This is going to be really cool. Yeah, so the first thing you're going to want to do when you come into the lab is fire up the app, and then do like Dr. Kegger said in the video. If it's blinking red, it's not connected. I think all you have to do is when you hit this button, mine's already blinking green because it connected to the uh, app on the laptop computer. Well, then you're good to go. And then basically what we do is we take either, either a standard of ethanol or the kombucha, and we measure it like Dr. Kegger has said. So you let it go for, and we may change a few things by the time we get to lab and as we work out the bugs. But you collect data for, let's just say, about 100 seconds to be consistent with his video. And then we'll figure out what's the measurement at that particular point so that we're consistent. And based on time, we may have to divide the labor. But that's all stuff we can figure out later. If you have the app, you come into lab, you get it hooked up to, to that particular sensor that will be at your bench. So you're ready to collect data. That's fine. So you come in, you're ready to go. All right, pre-lab. I don't think there's anything else on here I wanted to talk about in terms of procedure. Checking the barcode, all that good stuff. Yes. Hitting collect. OK, this says allow for 300 seconds of data collection. Great. OK, that, that may change, but that's about what we're going to do. And then between runs, you, let, you take the sensor out, set it out in the ambient surrounding air, and then let that signal come down. So you're checking that. But that was all in the video. I think, I think that'll be fine. Excellent. OK, uh, let's talk about, let's, let's do some dry lab calculations. So uh, Excel activities, that's fine. So here's a sample of data. I think these are the same concentrations you're going to use uh, in, in lab. And you're not going to prepare any of these solutions. These will be prepared for you, because I don't think we're going to have time. And uh, there's going to be a lot of solution we're going to have to use. So I thought I'd use the opportunity to do another dilution calculation. So um, what you want to do for, for this column is, uh, let's see, is what volume of ethanol, let me just show you some things here. This, so, wow, this is pure ethanol. <laughs> so this is pure ethyl alcohol. You can even see it says 200 proof right here. Maybe you can't from that distance, I don't know. So this is pure ethyl alcohol. Um, just if you're wondering, uh, this is the same alcohol as alcoholic beverages, but oftentimes something is put into here, like methanol or some other denaturing agent, so that people won't consume it. Uh, if, if we have actually have 100% pure without those denaturing agents, we have to store that somewhere else. So for this solution preparation exercise, how much ethanol would you have to put into a 500 milliliter volumetric flask, so your V2, is going to be 500. Actually, this you don't have to solve V2 here. Is to get these percentages. So this is a volume to volume percent, not really V2. So you're going to take uh, volume of ethanol, which is what you're solving for, over volume total. It's not really a dilution calculation. 
so that I'm just this speaking with my heart. Times 100 equals your volume to volume percent. Now that's a pretty easy calculation. So if the volume to volume percent is 0.1% to solve the equation, okay, and I'll just give you the first one so that you have it. I think I have this already on my spreadsheet, but it's a good spreadsheet activity. I think if I did it right, you're only gonna take half a milliliter. Is that right? I think that's right. If it's not right, just double check it. To get 0.1%, that's percent already, you're only gonna need half a milliliter? You need 500? Okay, so double check that. That's fine. This is just a part of the action. See if you can program the Excel spreadsheet to do all of these. So you take these percentages, set up a formula, and calculate these volumes. Don't do these each on a calculator. That'd be a waste of time. See if you can have the uh, Excel spreadsheet fill that in as an Excel exercise. More practice. Okay. Um, I want to get the chair here. So you'll see this later in the lab is you can make a graph of those data, that's fine. So that's what you should do. So when I say Excel activities, what do I mean? Well, make a graph. And, uh, you know, call it, give it a, a good title, like kombucha analysis or something like that. And you can do this while I'm talking on the video. You don't have to sit there and stare watching me do stuff. You can call up the Excel spreadsheet and just get to work. And um, let's see, we're gonna put, uh, how did I label this? Change the, uh, so this is a volume to volume percent ethanol here. And then I just labeled this sensor counts over here. I'm not gonna put all the dimensions in. So make it a good graph. Um, you don't have to do zero, zero. In fact, I'm not sure you want to do zero, zero as a generic data point. I'll check on that for later. And you're going to get data. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. We have six data points. And I'm just going to sketch the graph. So you have, here's what my data looks like. There, there, there. That's the first three. Again, I'm not putting all of this on there. And this one is a little lower. And then the other ones, that they're, not, they're not evenly spaced. Something like that. I'm not drawing a straight line, I'm not doing connect the dots, I'm not doing any of that. I'm just plotting the points, that's all. So, so just see if you can plot them and have it look something like that. Excellent. Okay, so if you need to take a minute, go ahead and do that. But what I want you to do, and it says it over here, and I'm gonna actually write the answers for what I get over here, is what would the equation of the line look? So once you have the graph, if you're using Excel, you click on the graph. I know this would be easier if I had some sort of projection of my spreadsheet, but at this point, you're probably pretty sophisticated to this. And you can add the trend line. That's fine. And what you can do, it'll, it'll put the best fit line. The problem is, this data is not really linear. If you've already read through this, you go, why are you doing this with a straight line? The procedure tells us to do it with the quadratic equation. Well, I'm doing this so you compare the two. So we're gonna pretend it's a straight line. So what I want you to do is draw the best fit line. When you go under, where, uh, under the little plus sign where you add the trend line, if you notice when you hover over trend line, there's an arrow. And you hover over the arrow under trend line and choose more options. And it will let you display the equation. So if it's a line, it's y equals mx plus b. And well, actually, you can display the r squared. It will give you both the equation and the r squared. And what I came up with was, OK, uh, y equals. 1.6198x. So if if it's a straight line, I the Excel gave me y equals 
1.619, I think that's it. A, that's the slope, x minus, I didn't draw my graph very well, so the y-intercept is actually negative, minus 0 0.1832. And my r-squared value, my correlation coefficient, was 0.9943. Now again, this is not what you're going to do with the data in lab, but I'm just doing this for a computer exercise. So if this data were linear, and you came up with a y equals m, this is the equation you would get, and then you could do something like determine an unknown. And I'm just, let's, just, let's just pick an unknown sensor concentration. Let's say you put in your kombucha, and you get a measurement of 0.155. So your, your kombucha, gives you a reading of 0.155. Is that, is that in the range? Yeah, it's in the range. Okay, well graphically you would find 0.155 go over and down. Mathematically, you would plug in, uh, let's see, you would plug in 0.155 here, right, because that's the y, and you'd solve for x, and that would tell you the percentage. So graphically or mathematically. And you can do that, okay? So you should do that. What would the what would the concentration, excuse me, the percentage of ethanol in kombucha be volume to volume percent if the sensor was 0.155, assuming a linear relationship? But it's not a linear relationship, so I want to show you how to do something else. Uh, this is great. Excel, you can fit the data to lots of different mathematical functions. A line is just the most common. So if you go back to the, the plus sign next to the chart, go to trend line again, and click on the little arrow by trend line, okay? And go under more options. Okay, when you do that, linear, it'll give you all these different options. You can fit it to an exponential, you can fit it to a linear, you can fit it to a logarithmic. Well, what the uh, procedure tells you to do is we want to fit this data to a quadratic equation. Now the quadratic equation is uh, ax squared plus bx plus c. If you remember your quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, and then there's a way you solve for that. And then, uh, well, which function is that? You want to choose polynomial. Okay, and then you want to choose a second order polynomial. So you choose polynomial, choose second order, and you're good to go. And what I came up with, if you do that, I came up with, uh, well, let's see. I'm going to detach this so I can read it easier. So if this is a quadratic relationship, I came up with, uh, let's see, y equals 0 0.2995 times x squared plus, okay, 1.5. So let me just read it off here. So y equals 0.2995x squared plus 1.1438x minus 0 0.0793. And actually, as an indicator that this is a better fit, the correlation coefficient is higher, 0 0.9986, which is higher than if it was a line. It's, it's, for this data, this data is actually pretty linear, but we're going to do something better and use this quadratic equation. Okay, so, um, yeah, sorry, this kind of, 
Yep. And you're going to do this as you're calculating, but let's see if you can figure this out. So if you want to take your signal, how would you figure this out? How would you solve the quadratic equation for that? Well, I'm going to kind of leave that up to you, is go back and uh, see if you can figure out how would we solve this equation for x using the quadratic formula. And you may have to look up the formula for how to do that. And you can come to office hours, or you may talk about this in the lab. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually looking at your calculation section. And calculation number one is produce a plot, fit the quadratic equation using the example below, get the R squared, use the detector response of the kombucha, in this case a dry lab calculation would be 0.115, determine, okay, you will have to solve the quadratic equation. Nice. And then what's the last calculation? Ah, okay. The last calculation is to find the, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm going to leave that one go for now. Okay, that should be enough. If you come into lab with your app ready to go, you've taken a stab at how you would solve the quadratic equation. By the way, these two answers should be similar, shouldn't they? Because if you get 0.115 as your signal, and you go over and down, well, that's... Okay, and then for this one, well, they should be about the same, shouldn't they? So you should get about the same value for x for both of these equations. So try it both ways. If you're struggling with the, with the quadratic equation, uh, go and see your instructor and maybe they'll go through that with you. But that's something you should try on your own, is solving the quadratic equation to get this one. And uh, that's where we'll leave the video. So it's a good lab, we'll see how it goes. Sorry for my little stumbling video here, but this is the first time we've ever done this lab, so I'm kind of excited to see how it goes. All right, we'll see you in lab.